So I suppose if we look over the last kind of four or five years in CLL, we've we've seen huge huge developments. Um, uh, essentially, we've moved through to an era where uh, the vast majority of patients are going to be managed with targeted inhibitors, so BTK inhibitors that are kind of covalently binding primarily, and PCL2 inhibitors uh, either as monotherapy or in, in combination with CD20 antibody as fixed duration. Of course, the two are being studied uh, in the frontline um, setting. Um, with or without the addition of CD20 antibodies. And of course, it'll be interesting to see how that data evolves. But we primarily have two classes of agent which are approved both in the frontline setting and relapse disease. And the majority of patients will likely receive one or either of those um, in the initial phase. And depending on the tolerability profile and the depth of response and duration of response, then patients will almost certainly at some point receive another with uh, the other one of those agents um, in relapse disease. Now, of course, it's a little bit unknown about retreating patients with venetoclax at the moment after fixed duration therapy, and I'm, I'm sure we'll see more data accumulate um, supporting that approach. But in essence, we have two, two classes of drugs where patients will be able to sequence uh, through those therapies uh, potentially over many, many years. And so that uh, opens up a kind of number of interesting questions around both the optimum sequence of therapies, um, given we have these really good new options, whether fixed duration therapy of the combination can then lead to uh, the ability to retreat with one or either of those agents later on based on genetic profile of the disease at relapse and so forth. And then, of course, the big question at the moment, or one of the big questions at the moment is what then fills the the space of um, the so-called unmet need space uh, after patients have relapsed through covalent BTK inhibitors and BCL2 inhibitors. We're seeing some kind of interesting data accumulate in that space. There's some uh, interesting data on cellular therapies. So CAR T cell based therapy uh, looks interesting. There is some data on allogeneic stem cell transplant in appropriate patients in that setting that looks uh, fairly encouraging. And obviously allogeneic transplant has really kind of gone out the window for a number of years based on these newer agents uh, that have become available. But obviously as patients cycle through these agents now, particularly younger, fitter patients with um, biologically challenging disease, certainly allogeneic transplant kind of remains an option in that space. And then very interestingly, we've seen the, the role of reversible BTK inhibitors, so non-covalently binding BTK inhibitors that are that have a different mode of action, a different, a different binding mechanism, and therefore are uh, potentially effective in patients who have uh, known genetic mutations associated with covalent binding BTK inhibitors. So uh, the cis 4 one mutation, for example, and um, we've seen a, a, an interesting drug uh, developed in that space called pyrotobrutinib or LOXO305, which um, the initial data has been presented and, and published in the Lancet earlier this year and looks actually very encouraging in, in, the, in patients who've received a number of lines of therapy, including um, chemotherapy, CD20 antibody therapy, BCL2 inhibitors, BTK inhibitors, and actually PI3 kinase inhibitors as well. So, so, so a number of different lines of therapy. I think it's a very open space. It's a competitive space and, and one that's evolving very quickly. It's great to see a number of new options coming along to, to so-called fill the, the new unmet need in, in CLL.